All right, let's start the regular board meeting. The Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Mr. Ferrar, please. Mr. Chairman. David Bergstress. Here. Michael Astafan. Excused. Albert Hayes. Here. Thomas Stover. Here. Mark Finkel. Here. Michael Clark. Here. Robert Lester. Here. Robert Fulton. Here. John Hodgson. Here. Carol Wright. Here. Richard Ferrar. Here. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. All right. I need a motion to adopt the revised meeting agenda. So this is also a revised. Right. To the appeal. Do you want to explain the revisions or do we need to? Did, all we did is under the report of the executive director add the Santucci Levins thing appeal to the board. Okay. Thanks. Motion? So moved. A second? I'll second. Mr. Stover? Hayes Stover. Mr. Albert moved. Or Mr. Hayes, I mean Mr. Stover. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Thank you. Uh, I don't have a list of guests, so I assume. Any officials want to speak? All right, uh, public comment period. I have two names so far. Uh, Mr. Lobenstein, would you like to speak first? Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, needless to say, you know, the Santucci's and the Lobensteins are trying to really upset them over all the negative publicity, false information that's been thrown out about us, uh, particularly being that, uh, you know, the claim we just came, all of a sudden decided to uh, uh, want more uh, permit air. Not the case. Not the case. Uh, this issue goes way back from when my wife and I first purchased our property back in 1980. And I think what I need to do is really go back and explain exactly where we're coming from. We certainly are two um, uh, permit holders that all of a sudden suddenly decided that we wanted more permit area. Um, back in uh, 1979, uh, in fact, we were one of the original purchasers, um, the Lumen and Betsy Robinson subdivided approximately 100 acres into uh, six lots, lot 1A through 6A. Uh, and they retained um, Block 3A, which was approximately 15 acres. And in fact, I was looking at the uh, Sagandaga uh, Protection Committee uh, newsletter the other day, paragraph 5. I don't know where they got their information from, but what they need to do their homework. Anyway, we purchased those two lots, and we were told by um, the regulating district at that time that we, uh, Mr. Gifford, by the way, that we were back lot, um, both of our parcels. We purchased parcel 4A and 5A. Uh, we questioned him uh, numerous times about this, and he insisted that we were back lot. So we ended up with the 10, two 10 foot strips. Uh, years passed on. Um, fast forward. Uh, we sell Block 5A to the Santucci's, and they approach us and say, hey, something isn't right here. Uh, we certainly, the River Authority abuts our property. Uh, anyway, to make a long story short, uh, upon some investigation and contacting the regulating district, we sought to find out, indeed, we are front lot. So, we were, our lots were mislabeled back originally when the properties were, were subdivided back in uh, 1979. So as a result of our two 10-foot strips, what would originally should have been uh, some more of our um, um, permit area ended up on lot 6A, which is the Mikulix. And if anyone, I don't know if any board members went down there and looked physically have to go down there and look. There's a long shoreline there. Certainly enough room down there to accommodate the Santucci's and us without interfering much on the Michelin's. 
Um, so anyway, we're hoping that the um, board has reviewed this and can see our point, but we certainly were misled way back in 1980 when we purchased our property and thought that we were back lots. And yet, we are front lots, confirmed by the regular condition. Thank you very much. Thank you. And to confirm, three of us did go over and view it by yesterday. Three board members. I'm sorry. Three board members did go over. Okay, three of us okay, did go okay, over right, yesterday. Yeah. Once they marked it for us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Ms. Santucci? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and board members. Um, a slight continuation from Ray Levenstein. Eight years ago, we purchased a plot of land. When we purchased the land, we met, of course, with the realtor. The realtor's documentation signed by Mr. Lueck stated that we, the property itself came with 90 foot of beach rights. We questioned what was going on because we were given a map. We walked the property lines. We walked so many feet on the left, the right, the front of it. We questioned the regulating district at the time, wanted to know why we were only given 90 feet per the purchasing agreement when 180 feet of our property directly adjoins the regulating district's property. The comment that we were given by Mr. Lueck is it is a horseshoe shaped cove that we would be involved with. And because there's neighbors who have to share that we were requested to take strictly the 90, not the 180 feet that we would typically be entitled to if it was straight flat land so that our neighbors could partake also. We decided, no, we're not going to be greedy. We're not going to be it, someone who can't share. And we agreed to the 90 feet. We file our documentation for a beach permit, and it doesn't come with the 90 feet. We have been fighting for the past eight years to have that changed. What we purchased is property that came with 90 feet. And anyone in this room who thinks that they would sign an agreement for a particular piece of property valued at a specific value with 90 foot of frontage, and then they don't receive it, and they don't think they're going to fight for it afterwards, I think anyone in this room who says, no, I would sit back and just accept it, is a liar. Anybody in this room who signs a legal contract for purchase and doesn't receive what they purchased would fight for it. At this time, I mean, it's a regulating district. Unfortunately, it's not anyone else in this room. It is none of our neighbors who created this issue. This issue was created strictly with the regulating district. We have letters way before any kind of resolution that state both from Glenn LaFave and Jim Lueck, we are front lot, we've had ample surveys done, we can only have a front lot beach permit. That's all we're allowed to acquire. Yet now we're being told we can't even acquire that because it's not available to us. Well, it was when we purchased the property. We have letters of apologies from the regulating district. I'm sorry, but all of this turmoil is created by the regulating district. At this time, the only way to resolve this matter, according to our attorney, is to pursue legal action for the difference in the property value. We purchased a piece of property with specific frontage and a specific property value amount. It will no longer be valued at that. That will involve a legal action for compensation. And we are prepared to do that at this time. And at this time, once that's taken place, we'll be able to sell our property for reduced amount. And when we sell our property for reduced amount, our neighbors can sell their properties for reduced amounts, and that's going to affect the entire lake. <coughs> but that wasn't my choice. This is something that the regulating district has done. It's something that the regulating district is not taking responsibility for. The regulating district, maybe not the current members, but the regulating district at the time has, has told us 
that we have the burden of proving to the regulating district that we are front lot. We are the individuals who are entitled to what we signed a contract for. We have proven that. Now the regulating district is the person who are telling us, I'm sorry, but we can't do anything unless you make sure the resolution is lifted. It's not our choice to lift a resolution. It's not our choice to change a resolution. It's the regulating district. They're the ones who are using us as their pawns. And at this point, we're really tired of it. We no longer want to be pawns in anyone's game. We signed a legal contract. We are front lot. The regulating district has, a, has agreed that we're front lot. We have no problem sharing with our neighbors. We're not greedy individuals. We just want what we pay for. And one way or another, we'll acquire compensation. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Jim. Can I just add something? Certainly, go ahead. Just for the record. Uh, I just wanted to point out that um, our um, our property, uh, we have 790 feet of um, property that abuts the regulating district. The um, Santushis have 200, and the, and the Nicolets yeah. have 300. I just want to set that out for the record. That's what Thank I mean. you. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else like to speak? Uh, of course. I'd like to speak. Sure. <clears throat> they want to uh, obviously change the lines, and you're not going to get property from somewhere, and you want to take it from me. They want my permit area that was allocated to me when I purchased my piece of property. Okay? <clears throat> they don't mind turning me into a decreasing pie as the lake goes down. All right? I don't understand why they should be an increasing piece of pie. I don't really understand how they could possibly even think that they were getting more footage than is there. I mean, the lines were there when I bought it. I mean, they knew what was there. I don't know how the misrepresentation came about. Front lot, back lot, I don't believe that really falls into play. If you want to be classified front lot, and be a decrease in pie from 100 and 700 feet down to 10 feet where it meets the water. That's fine with me. They're more than I'm more than willing to let them have what's there that touches their property. But why they should take my permit from me to increase their value and obviously decrease mine? I mean, I, I have to be opposed to it. I mean, anybody just like they say, anybody within the room would be opposed to it or what they want to take from me. So, you know, that, that's, that's basically it. It really hasn't changed from two months ago when we sat here. And obviously, you've seen the lines. You were there before. You know, they've been there, you know, for me for 28 years. So I see no reason why we should change them now. But. Uh, We're not going to make more lakefront property. There's, there's no, they right. don't, it's there. You can't create what's not there. So you have to take it from somebody. And obviously, it's going to be taken from me if it's taken at all. Okay. And I believe it affects <clears throat> other people involved other than us three. It affects other permit holders on both sides further down. I mean, that whole stretch for two miles, all the lines are parallel. They're all, you know, I mean, you see, the, you know, you have the maps. Mm -hmm. They're all parallel lines drawn all the way through that whole area. I've seen some of the maps. Any, anything else? No, I, that's all I have. Okay. Go ahead, Guy. Mr. Guy Pullen. First I have, uh, letter of appeal for your decision and uh, a little disappointed because all I get is we have to abide by our surveyor well I basically proved to you that your surveyor was wrong on the 27 feet that you have allocated to Casey 
when the deed shows 25 feet along the taking line. So I've proven that your surveyor is wrong. Uh, I, I tried to be reasonable with this because uh, Whitney has 125 feet at the taking line Get it at the water's edge, I show 146 feet. No, I'm not a licensed surveyor, but I can take a transit, turn it 90 degrees, and take a measurement. I can figure out pretty close what it is. Uh, Casey has 135 feet at the taking line, and at the water's edge, 158 and you know who lost it, right? Uh, and we're talking about all direct lakefront. No cross the road, no nothing. The lines are all parallel, 49.51 degrees west. I even wanted Dan Kiskis to go down and take a look. Well, he's not licensed. Well, I would love Dan Kiss Kiss, Albert, you did it for many years, go down there with the transit, I want to be there, we'll swing that thing 90 degrees, now I have to hire a licensed surveyor, which before was not allowed, you would not accept a licensed surveyor. Now. I have to hire a licensed surveyor, which I've contacted one. It's only a matter of when he gets some time to come up and do it. But I've basically proven that, this, that your licensed surveyor, which incidentally you fired, was wrong. And you can't accept that. So I will be appealing it. And you will also be getting a, a letter from my attorney. Thank you. I'll give you one. Yeah, one more. And I would love to see someone down, come down and take a look. You know, he marked 375 feet down. It's staked out at 30 feet 8 inches. Nobody's even come down to look at it. Thank you. Hey, okay. Thank you. I did last year. I did. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. One more. My, the only thing I wanted to say is yes, I'm not saying that our neighbors may or may not have had 300 feet given to them. I am not saying that they haven't had it for a period of time. What I'm saying is, throughout time, there have been irregularities, improper things that may have been done. Maybe not by the current people sitting before us, but by other individuals. You can't sweep it under the rug. Something has to be done to correct the wrongs that were created. Unfortunately, if anybody here purchases a piece of property and they're not one of the good old boys who happen to be in the area, who happen to be able to go to lunch with or give favors to or whatever the case is, then they're treated differently. And unfortunately, that's what happened in the past. People were treated differently. We came into the area. We were not known by anyone. We did our surveys, we checked our title search, we walked the property lines, we checked with the regulating district, why is it 90 feet in our purchase agreement? Why isn't it 180 when we adjoin your property by 180 feet? We did everything any human being who is making a purchase would do. We didn't do anything wrong anything that the buyer beware individuals think, gee, you should be aware, be aware of what you're purchasing. We were. We did everything by the book. The only thing we didn't do, and I don't know how anyone could do it, is unfortunately to check Mr. Lueck and Mr. Lefebvre's credibility and what we were told versus what truly could happen. That would have changed a lot. Unfortunately, there are some things that you just can't check. 
Go ahead. You want to trust so, okay. And uh, when we purchased our house 21 years ago, as a condition of closing, the uh, permit transfer was part of the uh, paperwork. Mm -hmm. It had to be approved. So uh, just sharing that. With you. And your relationship to any of this is? Uh, I'm chairman of the SBC, but I'm speaking on behalf of myself right now. Okay. Share some information. We were told that we had to wait until afterwards. We were not. It was not something that came with the closing. Okay. One more. I'm David Smale, and I'm co-chairman of the Day Property Owners Association and vice president of the Great Sacramento Lake Association. And when I look at property around my my property up on North Shore Road and in that town where they uh, there are lots that would, uh, based on the, the current definition of front lots, would be front lots because uh, they were directly across the road from from uh, the uh, property that the district owns. Uh, however, in that area, those areas, for whatever reason, has been divided up into 10-foot accesses. And if, if we see, uh, I fear that, that what will happen it, it is is if we go and start changing some, some, some of these th th things, things, whatever mis you could say, well, there was a mistake on these lots, you're going to be seeing, seeing probably a dozen more appeals just down the road for, from me because the people are in the same situation that these people are in. You know? So I don't think this is an isolated uh, uh, event, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, maybe some of the the, the staff uh, probably know other other locations where it's very similar, where there are lots that would, by definition, be front lots, are being treated as ten or back lots, and they only have ten or fifteen feet. And that is not this is not a unique situation here. And I don't know uh, if this. Appeal goes forward, and I'm not saying saying who's right up in this appeal. There's a, other people who are going to follow follow suit, suit and then probably give you a, an article, push an appeal or an article 78 to gain back what what they think would be only fair and right because they are also front lines. Thank you. Would you like to speak? <laughs> Hi, I'm Kathy Doherty. I'm the superintendent of schools in the Northwood School District. Thank you for entertaining my comments. <clears throat> I'm here to let you know that yesterday at the uh, County Board of Supervisors meeting, Fulton County, the Board of Supervisors passed a resolution uh, to make the payments to the affected school districts, uh, in my case in Northville, in the amount of $337,981.19 for the uh, to cover the uh, taxes for the Hudson River Leopard Regulating District for the um, uh, 2011 12 school year, uh, for which I am obviously very grateful, and I'm sure the taxpayers in Northville are very grateful, the students and the teachers. Uh, my question is um, what is, and I understand we probably won't get a response today, but I just wanted to put it out there. Uh, what is the intention of the Regulating District with regard to the 12 13 school taxes? The tax bills will be mailed next month. Uh, I have been dealing with this since October 29th, I believe, of 2009, when I first um, met with uh, Mr. Lefebvre and was told at the time that uh, we could expect not to get our school taxes for that school year. So we have quite a history. Um, we have um, expended what I feel are unnecessary dollars on this issue, dollars that we did not budget. Um, this year, about $6,000, which I have to say, compared to the amount that you have budgeted for uh, financial services, I'm overwhelmed with how much you're spending on, on, uh, on not financial, on legal services that an organization of this size would have to spend that kind of money on legal services. Uh, our, our school district spends 15000 a year, and that covers our basic services and special ed. So um, we are very frugal. Um, we do what, uh, what we believe is, is the right thing to do by way of the taxpayers, but um, I certainly 
do not want to have to repeat this uh, same expenditure again for the 12-13 uh, school year taxes. And I know that you've worked hard on this reapportionment study. Give everyone a lot of credit for that. I know that was first discussed. My first question to Mr. LaFave is uh, when he had a plan for paying the taxes back in 2009 was, what will you do if that doesn't work? And he said, well, we have a reapportionment study going on, or anticipating. And it's now three years, and it's still in the so, so I know that things take a long time in the courts. Um, legal matters um, can seem like they uh, take forever. But hopefully this will be the resolution. And uh, I would appreciate knowing if uh, one way or the other, maybe from Mr. Clark, what the intentions are with regard to the taxes for the 12-13 uh, school year. And uh, I'm sure that the county supervisors would appreciate that also because the money that they took yesterday was from their fund balance, which replaces the money that we took from our fund balance. I also need to say, and no disrespect intended, but as I was looking through your um, some of your information on your website, it's very thorough, and whoever puts that up there is, is very, very good. But to see a $43,000 expenditure for meals and travel for the general board um, in one year, I think is an, ex an extreme amount of money. Um, our board uh, gets no reimbursement for travel. Um, you know, I know do I take it. Um, no refreshments for anyone. We don't pay for meals. If we do meals, we pay for our own. Uh, because again, we feel that um, it is uh, it is our responsibility as good stewards or public money to uh, to absorb those costs ourselves. So uh, anyway, I look forward to maybe Mr. Clark giving me a call that uh, we'll know what the status will be of our tax Thank you. Thank you. Well, hmm. yeah, includes it's travel. Year. That's what that. Go ahead. <coughs> not the legal expenses. Well, for the record, legal expenses are zero for the upcoming budget. Okay. Uh, I, I think the superintendent is speaking to a, the past budget. 11-12. Right. Yeah. And also the same for the travel and meeting expenses, the 43000 is prior year. I believe the budget going forward is somewhere in the neighborhood of nine to eleven thousand, which basically covers hotel rooms. Yeah. Come and do some hotel and travel. We could meet in one place. I think I've got luxury. Yeah. Now, to reiterate, the board received no compensation other than most of when we travel throughout travel. the state. Speak, speak to the county's plan. They paid our, our motel and, and meal expenses as well. And, 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 and Kathy, in terms of your question as far as one, what's our intention as far as the 12-13 tax bill that we're going to receive very soon, uh, we fully intend to pay that as soon as we have, quite frankly, money in the checking. And we anticipate, we still anticipate payment of the assessments uh, the previous three years plus uh, this current year coming up and we, we are confident that we're going to receive that. We have acknowledged all along that the regulating district owes those taxes. As a matter of fact, it, to pay the previous two years, the nine, you know, realizing that school is different than county, out of cycle a little bit, but uh, two years worth of taxes, 9, 10, 10, 11, those were paid following uh, Fulton County Supreme Court's decision. Those were paid by, I think it's worth saying again, those were paid by liquidating all the reserves within the Black River area. Um, and fortunately, we were able to do that. Unfortunately for the Black River area beneficiaries, um, that, those reserve monies are not currently there. The, the normal purpose of retaining those reserves would be to stabilize future assessments. Those future assessments are now upon us in, in, in the, and I realize this is certainly not your doing or anybody else's, but we're in that position where it, it's a ripple effect. The reserves not being there um, put the regulating district in the position of not being able to use a stabilization fund to maintain a modest increase in Black River area assessments. Uh, consequently, uh, the beneficiaries 
for the Black River suffered a 36 percent increase mm -hmm. over the next three years because we are unable to use any rate stabilization. So I put that out there to, to let you know that we have expended everything we possibly can and we're still working toward the solution. We expect one. <laughs> of course we do, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone. Just, uh, moving along, uh, I need approval of the June 12th regular board minutes. Any questions or discussion or revisions? No. Okay. Need a motion? I make a motion. We, we approve it. Need a second? <clears throat> Second. Mr. Finkel? I have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Thank you. All right. Let's get on to the report of the executive director. Mr. Chairman, thank you. You'll find my report on page. I don't have the page in front of me, but suffice it to say that the entire month has been spent almost without exception upon the uh, uh, development and, and fine-tuning of the 2012 Hudson River area apportionment. Uh, 29. It's on page 29 of the board package. Uh, that has been, with only minor exceptions, to deal with uh, a couple of permit issues that the administrator and or chief engineer brought to me on namely uh, an appeal. Um, the entire focus has been the apportionment and it will, I expect, continue to be for a while. And of course, I will answer any questions that the board has. I don't have anything at this time. And since, if you don't mind, I mean, at this point, I could, uh, I was going to actually, I wanted to clarify a couple of points Go ahead. Uh, made by uh, Mr. Santucci and Mr. Lovenstein and, and, and certainly their heartfelt uh, mm -hmm. appeal to the board. Um, it, and it's, it, this is not directed at any one person. It, it, it's intended so that there's no uh, misconceptions. There's many misconceptions about uh, access permits. Uh, I, I, will, I should state that we need to keep in mind it's, it is New York State land, um, and therefore it cannot be alienated in any way uh, by uh, including sold or leased or anything of that sort. Where the permit system is in effect, um, when an individual and many people, we hear this many times a summer, when an access from uh, when somebody new comes into the area, they buy a piece of property, um, and of course they they sign a purchase agreement for that piece of property. Um, regardless of what that agreement may or may not say, we wouldn't see that. Um, but that doesn't bind the regulating district to uh, an access permit. If they're if they're a front lot permit and they're front lot eligible then they have the option of then applying for an access permit. But uh, a purchase contract is not a contract with a regulating district or, or New York State. It's a contact contract between two private individuals for the sale of private property. And I just felt that I should, again, it's a point of clarification. Uh, it may have no bearing, but I ought to uh, just put that before the board. And just for point of clarification, there are two separate appeals? Yes. Okay. All right. Any questions on what was discussed with the Robinsteins or the Santucci's? Then I would ask for a vote to uh, move to grant the appeal by Mr. and Mrs. Lobenstein. I have a motion. I'll make that motion. All right. I have a motion to grant the appeal. I have a second. I'll second. I have a second. 
Okay, I have a motion and a second. Um, I will ask for a vote to grant the appeal for Lavenstein, the Lavensteins. I vote I make a I vote no. <coughs> Too, so. All right. So, uh, four no's. Four no's. So it's unanimous to deny the appeal for Mr. Mrs. Bobenstein. I will ask for a motion from the board to resolve the Santucci appeal. All right. Motion, Mr. Mr. Stover. I have a second. A second. Second for Mr. Hayes. Motion and second. Ask for a vote. No. I vote no. I vote no. Nay. Nay. So I have four no's. Four nays there. Um, unfortunately, it's a, the lines, uh, from what I understand, the lines are drawn off of the property originally and with the geographic, the geographics of the lake and it's an unfortunate situation, but um, if you people can come to an agreement, so be it, but I don't feel it's my place to find a, a solution for you. I'm sorry. All right. So, all right. So that being taken care of, I want to thank everyone for their discussions, their input, their information. Um, I did look at maps. I, we all looked at maps. We all looked at the property. I, this wasn't done haphazardly. And I actually agree with Mr. Schmail. There are a lot of repercussions that could have come from a decision like this. Okay. So, thank you. All right, so can we do the contracts or no contracts? No contracts. No. Ah. Let's get into the, the committee reports before we go into the executive session. The finance committee uh, said. A resolution to the board to adopt the Hudson River area apportionment and another resolution to adopt the revised budget. Okay, so it's been brought to the full board to adopt a resolution for the Hudson River apportionment. Any other any other discussions on it or uh, go ahead. Chairman, I I would offer uh, one thing with regard to the State Environmental Quality Review Act, uh, the, it's my estimation that the action undertaken by the board to adopt the apportionment mm -hmm. uh, is, is properly characterized as a type two action uh, under Seeker, which essentially means that uh, it will not have a significant adverse impact per se or, or on its own. Uh, obviously, if the board wants to consider it an unlisted action and undergo an environmental review, uh, they are uh, permitted to do so. Uh, I would offer that uh, the action in and of itself involves no construction, involves right. no appropriation, uh, no major change in regulation. It's basically an administrative action as to how we're going to get paid. Uh, but the board ought to consider uh, those environmental impacts if, if it so desires. Uh, finding it a type two action basically comes down to it being a routine or continuing agency administrative and management issue, uh, there's no new program, mm -hmm. uh, no major reordering of priorities right. uh, that might might affect the environment. Um, at best, it is a, a preliminary planning or budgetary process uh, through which We've established a budget by statute, which is a, a legislative mandate, and then determine how to spread that budget among those who might pay it. Uh, specifically, that 
takes in the number 20 and 21 on the list of type 2 actions. Uh, it also might be considered the uh, adoption of a policy or procedure uh, in connection with those two previous items. Uh, again, another item on the type 2 list, uh, number 27. And finally, um, an action uh, not of the legislature or the governor, but basically pursuant to court order. The court has uh, ordered us to go back and establish a, a state chair, uh, and that is really what the regulating district's doing. So my recommendation is it's type two action. If the board doesn't want to treat it as a type two action and would rather treat it as a as an unlisted action, they could do so. I see no point in it. Again, it is just a satisfaction of a court order. Okay. Any other discussion? Mm -hmm. All right. So, a resolution to adopt the Hudson River area apportionment. Well, do you want to go through? Do you want to go through it again? As as a board, I believe that the uh, committee ought to report out the findings of the okay. committee. Maybe Mr. Clark is in a good position to do that. Go ahead, Mike. Mr. Chairman, I think you at least have heard the discussion that the committee had. Um, again, before, uh, before the full board now, uh, it's a proposed resolution to adopt uh, the 2012 Hudson River area apportionment. And again, that will, this apportionment, if adopted, uh, will affect assessments for previous three budget years, the cycle that has just ended, and uh, going forward, uh, certainly in the current budget year, it will uh, result in an assessment uh, of cost for this 2012-13 budget year. Um, again, uh, the staff recommends this new apportionment in the light of the appellate division third, third department said May 10th, uh, 2012 decision uh, which declared the board's previous apportionment that from March 30th 2010 to be invalid to the extent that it failed to consider and reduce the total amount to be apportioned by the amount chargeable to the state this current apportionment this uh, the 2012 Hudson River area apportionment does uh, reduce that amount to be apportioned by an amount chargeable to us to the state or specifically a New York State share this apportionment uses the same methodology which the appellate division third department determined to be rational and the apportionment will be used to reset the percentage of the costs as I've just mentioned uh, for the previous three fiscal years, 9, 10, 10, 11, and 11, 12, uh, to be borne by the identified beneficiaries, those beneficiaries being the five counties, including Warren County, Washington County, Saratoga, Albany, and Rensselaer, uh, for those previous three fiscal years. And it will also be used to establish the percentage of costs for the current and future fiscal years, as I had just mentioned. The need for this apportionment arose from the United States Court of Appeals, D.C. Circuit Court, November 28, 2008 decision. I am certain that every member here is familiar with that decision, uh, which essentially wiped out the regulating district's ability to apportion uh, as it had historically done for operations and maintenance costs amongst the uh, then beneficiaries of the, uh, the hydroelectric facilities, primarily, primarily uh, downstream from Great Saginaw Lake. Uh, pursuant to ECL 152125-1, the apportionment calculates a reasonable return to the state at zero dollars, and, and it is mandated in our statute that we consider this. Uh, that reasonable return includes the value of rights and property used from New York State, um, 
normal normally if, if if that property had been used, state property had been used to create the reservoir, uh, a reasonable return would have been considered to be six percent. But New York State lands were never flowed and are were never flowed at the time the reservoir was created because the property was purchased from private individuals, put in the name of the New York State for the express purpose of creating a regulating river regulating reservoir. A reasonable return uh, also includes uh, state services to be rent, state services that have been rendered in the operations of this, and, and no direct New York State resources have been employed to enable the regulating district uh, maintain its operations of uh, Great Second Dog Lake and uh, the Hudson River area in general. Consistent with the Appellate Division Third Department's ruling, staff again recommends uh, grouping the cities, towns, and villages uh, and their individual private property parcels um, by county. Uh, that is consistent with uh, methodology that the uh, May 10, 2012 ruling was based on, and it is consistent with the previous methodology. Um, staff recommends not breaking out the expenses or beneficiaries associated with the Indian Lake Reservoir for the reasons we discussed in committee. I'll restate those. Um, the, these costs, the, the, the operational costs of Indian Lake, would not materially re reduce, if at all, um, the charges imposed upon the identified beneficiaries. Those expenses are small, 62000 a year compared with uh, compared against $3.8 million per year. Uh, many of the same beneficiaries uh, in the lake would have nearly all of the same beneficiaries that uh, the beneficiaries of, uh, uh, if it were separated from uh, an apportionment of just Great Saganaga Lake. Um, the flood protection uh, afforded by Indian Lake is uh, lesser than that which uh, Great Sacandaga Lake affords, just number one, due to its size and also due to the very nature of the uh, uh, river channel immediately downstream from Indian Lake until it, and I, if, I, until it actually meets uh, the confluence with the um, with the second of the river. The, the, the channel's steep, it's narrow, it's, the, the flood protection benefit is truly realized below that point. From the, from the base of uh, Conklinville Dam down. Uh, and again, uh, the benefits from Great Sacadaga Lake uh, uh, mathematically and statistic statistically account for protection provided by Indian Lake. Mm -hmm. uh, it's within, you know, within the margin of error of doing that. Also, uh, the committee had also heard discussion with the general counsel uh, regarding the statutory requirement to view. Um, if you'd like to pick up there, if you don't mind. Uh, sure. Well, the statutory requirement to view does not require that the entire board visit each parcel or even each municipality within the petition area. Uh, rather, it contemplates a thorough understanding of the apportionment's breadth and scope, inasmuch as federal law prohibits the district from apportioning costs among <coughs> hydroelectric power <coughs> companies. Uh, it's my recommendation that it's rational to conclude that the requirement to view individual hydropower generation facilities is moot. Uh, the Appellate Division Third Department decision also affirmed this interpretation. Uh, in its May 10th, 2012 decision. Uh, if the board were to approve the apportionment here today, uh, we would then have to have the board chair certify the apportionment to DEC for approval. Uh, in addition, should the apportionment be modified after the board hears any grievance, uh, the board must then certify the modified apportionment back to DC for its approval. Uh, speaking 
briefly about the apportionment grievance hearing. Uh, the board must afford any interested person an opportunity to grieve the apportionment. That means any of the five counties or anybody else that might uh, determine that they aren't happy. Uh, we presume that if the state is unhappy with the state share, they will express that to us through DEC's approval process. Uh, the apportionment grievance hearing, uh, we would propose to hold that at the September meeting. That gives us ample opportunity to uh, get approval from DEC and to satisfy the 45-day uh, notice requirement that we have established in our own hearing regs. Uh, incidentally, our own hearing regs will govern the hearing process. Uh, you you uh, approved those regs uh, either at the beginning of 2009 or the end of, or beginning of 2010 or the end of 2009. And is there, there's no problem holding the grievance hearing in concurrence with the September meeting? Uh, no, that's okay. that's exactly what we did last time in March of 2010. Uh, the grievance hearing was held uh, as part of a regular meeting. Okay. Uh, that time we held it in Saratoga. Mm -hmm. Currently, we're uh, projected to hold our meeting in Lowville, but uh, sure, sure. it would be, a, be my recommendation that we move that meeting to Saratoga. Yes. Uh, obviously, if in Ms. Doherty's uh, behalf, we're trying to cut costs anywhere we can. Mm -hmm. That's why we're no longer holding meetings in hotels when we can avoid it. Uh, rather, hold them in municipal buildings, which are generally cheaper, uh, as long as they have the space. Um, often free. Uh, so I, I think staff will endeavor to try and get a, a meeting location in Saratoga, either in Boston Spa or uh, if we need to go, I think last time we did it at the Holiday Inn. Um, it, the last portion of grievance here was at the Holiday Inn. Chairman, my suggestion is we either use uh, the Saratoga County office or yeah. foreign county offices. I would, yeah. yeah. Either Whichever one's one. available. We've already, again, we've already made it, uh, reached out to these. Saratoga County. Probably. We'll start with that, and if they're unavailable, then we'll. Okay. Well, and the, the five counties' attorneys are uh, represented by a firm in, or the five counties are represented by a firm in Glens Falls. So Warren County might actually make the most sense. Sure. Um, we presume that as part of the proposed resolution, uh, the board would ask staff to uh, publish the hearing. Yes. Uh, notice and as well uh, prepare a staff or a press release to announce the new apportionment and the apportionment grievance hearing. Uh, this apportionment is going to use the same methodology as used in the March 30th, 2010 apportionment. Uh, incidentally, on the back of the materials that you have, uh, if you flip over that big packet, the back page has uh, an apportionment. Uh, notation at the bottom which reflects the March 10th, 2010 apportionment. That actually should be March 30th, 2010 apportionment. That same methodology that was used in, in the March 2010 apportionment would be used here again, wherein we would compare the value of real property within a 100-year floodplain, within each county, within the regulating district's petition area downstream of the Conkerville Dam to all such properties. Uh, a slight revision in the data inputs will reduce the, each county's total property value by the value of the properties uh, owned by the state within that county. Uh, and this apportionment will utilize the same data compiled for the 2010 apportionment. Uh, this is because staff found no evidence that the assessment rules provided by the counties uh, have undergone a material change. Obviously, if the counties want to agree with that, they can tell us, and we can make that change. Mm -hmm. uh, as noted in the Chief Engineer's September 10, 2010 <coughs> memo, uh, 
uh, staff is recommending that the district not utilize the methodology suggested by the consultant uh, AEG uh, hired in order to prepare a methodology. Um, I don't know if Rob wants to speak to that. Hmm. I certainly could if you want to be sure. Remind us of why we didn't go with that methodology. <clears throat> It's uh, it's towards the back of that packet, I believe. Yeah. Right before the resolution. Mm -hmm. I think primarily with the. the reason it stated in the uh, memo was that uh, AEG had some difficulty in identifying um, end user beneficiaries and they, they, they also used an area uh, uh, outside of the floodplain as a basis for their uh, determining uh, percentage of benefit and uh, yeah. And in a nutshell, uh, we, we were belief, uh, the staff was that uh, that would just, is just not an appropriate way to go forward um, and disagree with their Thanks. determination that it would be, there would be no method to properly identify or quantify the benefit. Uh, or, or determine a method for representing the benefit mm -hmm. of those providing flood protection, and uh, and thus we went with our methodology instead. Any questions? I do recall. It. Okay, let's continue. Well, Mr. Chairman, the, the methodology used to calculate the amount chargeable to the state or New York State share uh, is similar, but it's not identical to the methodology used to compare among, uh, among the counties. Both use the same property values within the 100-year flood plan the same roles. Uh, both recognize that after hydropower, flood protection is the most substantial and clearly defined benefit. Uh, the state share calculation identifies and extracts the values of all state properties lying within the affected counties and adds that figure to the value of state roadways and state bridges before comparing the sum of sum to the value of all non-state properties. Uh, and to value the state roads, uh, a figure of $1.5 million per mile of roadway of here of state roadway was used and to value the bridges uh, $300 per square foot uh, was used to um, assign a value to uh, New York State bridges and that's 300 that's $300 per square foot of bridge deck uh, the length times the width if you will Although the various benefits uh, to include augmentation or adding water to the river, uh, waste assimilation, canal operation, flood protection, recreation, and environmental quality uh, are derived by the state and by the counties, uh, uh, although the various benefits may differ, the use of the value of state land and the value of non-state property within the 100-year flood plain as a basis for calculating a respective proportion of benefit derived by the state in each county remains equally rational and reasonable as the, method as the methodology used in the March 30, 2010 apportionment. The flood protection benefit realized by each beneficiary and the state continues to represent all benefits received by those beneficiaries and the state.
Okay, thank you. All right, so from the synopsis, did we use the same methodology to determine the state's portion? And then we we, we used a very similar methodology to determine uh, New York State's share. Uh, and again, as I had explained to the Finance Committee, that method has already been approved. Okay. Well, it, it was it, it was it was clearly detailed right. in the uh, May tenth, uh, two thousand twelve court decision right. from the appellate division, and uh, they were very specific about using New York State roads mm -hmm. and New York State bridges as well as right. state property. Okay. Um, so we've extracted that. Yeah. Correct. The state property was extracted from the, the, the rolls uh, uh, used to mm -hmm. calculate uh, or a portion amongst uh, amongst the five counties. The um, and, and summed along with the values of roads and bridges to determine a New York State share. Right. That was deducted from the total amount to be assessed. That would be deducted from the amount to be total amount to mm -hmm. be assessed, and it was calculated to be eleven point nine six. Percent okay. uh, of the total amount, total dollars to be assessed uh, amongst beneficiaries. Okay. Questions? I think we beat that. Well, we have beat it to death. <laughs> well, we tried to. We really did oh, try and beat it to death with the uh, yeah. rather extensive yeah. packet of materials that you guys all got uh, some time ago. Mm -hmm. uh, outlining pretty much every one of those highlighted issues is is uh, addressed somewhere in that packet. Uh, so hopefully we have answered all of your questions in, in writing. Yes, you have. Uh, up to this point. The miles of road has been determined by DOT, the, the amounts used per, per mile or right. accepted standards, right. along with the bridges. Square foot was a good average amount. As and there's, you know, obviously in in there we detail a number of right. other methodologies we could have utilized to figure the state share. Right. Uh, we believe that we came up with a methodology that uh, is accurate, mm -hmm. is defensible, <coughs> is higher than most of the other ways to calculate. Right. Uh, well, we did the best we could. We'll go from here. So, all right. So now, let's proceed with a motion to accept the Hudson River area portion. I need a motion. I so move. Any second? Mr. Stover. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. So moved. So we will so. now. That's to approve the resolution adopting the apportionment? Yes. So now that has to be sent on to the DEC? Uh, That's where it goes? Yes. Okay. For, for the resolution you just adopted, uh, the uh, executive director will send that on. There's a letter that we have together that will accompany this whole packet. Mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, Go to DEC this afternoon. Good. Thank you. All right. Mr. Stover. The budget. Uh, bring the budget. Resolution for the budget. Okay. okay. <clears throat> the Finance Committee made a resolution uh, to forward to the full board to adopt the revised budget. Okay. So, Finance Committee is recommended to bring a resolution to adopt a revised budget to the full board. Would you like to highlight it for Two separate resolutions, one to revise the 2009 through 12 budget. Oh, that's right. Okay. And one to revise the, just approved back in June, the one 2012 to 2015 budget. Okay. Right. So, the previous tricyclic budget? Correct. Okay. And then? Previous and the current. All right. So, uh, you want to just give us a brief synopsis of how it changes the Again, past in, in both cases, the amount determined to be chargeable to the state mm -hmm. was the primary reason. Okay. 
uh, for the past three-year budget, there was also a need to uh, reduce in the income uh, section the previously uh, 950,000 portion of the 2009-10 assessment that represented the uh, city and villages and the undeveloped parcels for nine months. Okay. Okay. So in both cases. All right. So I need a motion to approve the 2009 to 2012 mm -hmm. revisions. To the budget. And this is the revised Hudson River area budget. Okay. So I need a motion. Mr. Finkel. Second. Second. Mr. Hayes. All, right. All in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Now, I need a motion to revise the Hudson River budget for the 2013 to 2012 to 15. 12 to 12 15. 12 to, 12 to 15? Correct. Yeah. 2012 to 2015. Put my teeth back in. Okay, I have a motion. I have second, Mr. Stover. Mr. Finkel, Mr. Stover. Can wait down that way? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Nice. Opposed? Nice. So moved. That's right. This is Hutchinson. Okay. 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 Um, let's go on to the general council report. And I think we're going to probably okay. okay. Uh, I will make this mercifully short, I hope. Okay. Uh, my report is on page 30. Uh, I had reported on uh, June 12th that the attorney for the five counties had filed a motion for leave to appeal with the uh, appellate division appealing the uh, ruling up to the uh, Court of Appeals. Uh, we're still waiting for a decision on that. Also, uh, on June 21st, Northern Electric Power Company and South Coast Falls, uh, both of which are subsidiaries of Borlex, commenced an action seeking refunds of amounts assessed under Keller State law between the FERC, FERC's issuance of a license to the regulating district in September of 2002 and the U.S. Court of Appeals D.C. Circuit's decision in November of 2008. Uh, the Attorney General has uh, indicated it will represent the district in that suit. Uh, and again, speaking to Ms. Doherty, uh, that's why the legal expenses are going down, because the Attorney General is now representing us. Uh, as well, on uh, June 4th and June 6th, uh, Fulton County and then Hamilton County brought suit to compel payment of the school and property taxes. Again, in prior years, why our expenses were up. Uh, the Attorney General's office has indicated it will also represent the regulating district in defense of these suits. Uh, we're awaiting a decision on the motion to re-argue, and we're helping the, appeal, the Attorney General to perfect its appeal of uh, the Albany County Supreme Court Judge Teresi's grant of summary judgment to Albany Engineering Corps. Uh, which had awarded 516000 plus uh, plus interest dating back to January 1, 2003. Uh, so we're working on that. I'm available to answer any questions. I suspect you are tired. <laughs> um, well, I'm probably going to have to go into executive session to discuss the Borlex and the Hamilton County. Okay. Fulton County. But in the interest of, I think I'll wait till towards the end of the meeting, to, so that people that want to leave and don't want to hear the end of it, okay, can leave. So let's get on. I don't have any questions. Any questions for Mr. Buzzard? No. no. Okay. Uh, I don't have anything right now. I don't want to Most of it's just dragging on and on and on. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Farrar? Mr. Chairman, my report is on page 32 with the detail following. Uh, the cash flow reports are on page 33 for the current fiscal period and then 
On 34, I have a cash flow report that goes through the close of this coming fiscal year, June 30, 2013. Uh, quickly, transaction processing and reporting for the fiscal month through end of June, which ends our fiscal year, will not be completed until approximately the second week of July, due in large part to the fiscal year uh, and closing activities. Uh, and two, and with regard to that, the district's independent auditor, uh, the Bonadio Group, uh, Randy Shepard being uh, the principal, they are scheduled to come in to perform their field audit, audit the week of August 6th through the 10th, which hopefully gets us uh, to a completed, certified independent audit in time for the public authority reporting requirement of September 30th, 2012. And I just had one other thing that, um, in terms of compliance reporting, the Public Authority Report Information System, which is how we submit our reports, uh, we, on about a month ago, provided the budget request report, uh, which would reflect through June 30, 2013, and that was completed and submitted on time. Good. Thank My you. abbreviated report. Thank you. So we're going to hear the audit report in September, possibly? Uh, yes, I think we should. I don't see any reason why they would not have it completed by the 30th. Well, actually, I, I, they'll have it completed by the 30th. The board would probably not, not see it. We would submit it, and then we'll the board the would see it in, at the October meeting. I just wondered how long the September meeting was. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's go through the engineer's report. Thank you. The report starts on page 56. It was dry. <laughs> well, that's an area that was dry in the Black River area. It's still dry. Um, oh, not the report. Yeah, not the end of my report. Uh, Mother Nature's. Yeah, we, in the Hudson area, it ranged from 68 to 117% of historic precips. Um, so, kind of. Average out probably about slightly slightly lower than historic average, but um, actually our uh, inflow to Great Sacandaga Lake and Indian Lake uh, were 119 and 103 percent mm. of historic average, which you know, it just depends on when it falls and how, how quickly it falls, and not necessarily completely dependent upon how much the total falls. Yeah. Uh, and uh, in the Black River area, uh, it ranged from 77 to 91 percent across Stillwater Old Forge and Sixth Lake with our inflow uh, at Stillwater at only about 46 percent of historic average inflow for the month of June. Uh, so needless to say, we're augmenting mm -hmm. uh, minim minimum flows necessary to provide the augmentation uh, that is called for in each area, in each river. And uh, we'll continue that pace until we start to see some. So it's a good thing we saved all rain. that water this spring. It's a good thing we saved all that extra water that we had in the spring. Yeah. <laughs> good. So the only other thing that I had at the end of my report, uh, following up on something I brought to the board last month, and that is a dam safety program. Mm -hmm. um, I, in a nutshell, I took our manual for dam safety inspections. Okay. Uh, added to it the required sections that FERC had outlined in its letter to us and to the board, mm -hmm. uh, namely training, communication, um, and responsibilities, although we already had some. Expanded that because FERC clearly did stress the need for all levels of management uh, in uh, an agency or, or company which operates for licensed facility to understand and have uh, some involvement, some responsibility. So we've broadened it a little bit and included reference to the board as well as executive director um, and, and some of the other staff. And uh, for all intents and purposes, it, was, uh, it is our previous manual for mm -hmm. safety inspections. Okay. And uh, simply bring that before you to just um, I allow you the opportunity to acknowledge and accept it before we prepare it and send it to the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. Okay. Any movement? Anything with Hawkinsville? 
Um, I know you guys would have been. Are we doing anything with it yet? Or? Uh, in terms of um, studies, further studies, further studies yeah. now that the uh, budget has been passed, okay. we will this salt fall be Good. moving moving in. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Any questions for the head engineer, chief engineer? None now. None now. <laughs> okay, thank you. Officer River, area. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks. My report starts on page 136, and with the interest of time, I'll keep it short. Uh, I will say that summer is definitely here. Uh, the complaint and the encroachment issues have increased significantly, and um, we're working hard on them, but that's where most of my time has been spent. Okay. Uh, I'll take any questions if you anybody has any. No, I want to thank everyone for the tour yesterday. I've toured it for 21 years. <laughs> <laughs> toured it. Toured it. Never heard it. Okay. No, I have any questions. Any other questions? Nope. Okay. The Black River area. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> My report starts on page 141, and um, things are operating <clears throat> rather normally and smoothly in the Black River area. We're thankful for it. Um, we have completed our second application of fertilizer and lime on the dikes at Stillwater and also over at the Six Lake dikes. We are in the process of, above and beyond what we normally do during this time of the year, we try to uh, complete our program of maintaining our facilities and, and doing some outside work. We are staining all of our uh, structures up at the Black River field office. We've completed one and working on the garage. And we are in the process of uh, preparing the gatehouse at Stillwater Dam for painting the ceiling, walls, and floors. So the guys are rather busy. Thank you. Yep. Any questions for Black River? <coughs> okay. At this point, I'd like to ask for an adjournment to go to the executive session and to discuss legal matters. Uh, litigation. Yeah, but if we do it right now, then we've got to note that we're coming back to do business because you still have one res one more resolution oh, scheduling the date and time. Oh. If you do that resolution first, then when we adjourn okay. to executive session, you can say we do. We have no business content. Thank you. Thank you for updating that. Um, Dan, I will ask for, uh, first of all, are any board member questions or comments on anything that went on today? Break up. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I need a resolution for the next board meeting, which can we pass a resolution at a place to be determined or? I think uh, we can, looking. we can set one now. We can set a place now. Oh. Well, we're looking at the uh, cooperative extension. Boston Spa. Yeah, in Boston Spa. Okay. I mean, we're looking at that. I mean, I we could also consider that. Uh, why, don't we, why don't we pass a resolution for that, and if we have to amend it, or we'll announce it. I mean, it's tentative if, we, if it needs to change, if it, it will. Okay. okay. All right. So a motion to uh, set the next meeting date for September 11th? 11th. September 11th. 2012. Okay. Tentatively at the Cooperative Extension Building in Boston. Right, in Boston Spa. Spa. Okay. Any motion? Tentatively, so moved. Okay. Mr. Sorry. Hayes, Mr. Stover. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So we will adjourn to executive session. There will be no business to, to <coughs> be taken care of afterwards. And I thank everyone for showing up. And